In today's video, FSD V12.3, Tesla on the cusp of unlocking a decatrillion dollar opportunity and the rules you'll understand in a minute. First, Tesla's lead designer, Franz von Holzhausen, showing off a photo of the Tesla team at a delivery center, making sure that literally every new customer gets not only their vehicle, but a demo drive of FSD V12. Tesla ain't fucking around. They're very serious about ensuring that literally every customer buying a new Tesla gets a short demo drive of FSD V12.3. Now, surely this can't possibly hurt take rates or word of mouth about what this software can do. How much of an impact it's going to have, we don't know yet. But this is a great strategic move from Tesla that came straight from the top, as always. And now this, Joe, ex-Airbnb, by the way, met the guy and a few other, actually all the Airbnb founders in 2014 at the Airbnb Open. If you know, you know, Joe's since moving on and currently on Tesla's board. This was a repost of Sawyer Merritt, who was sharing some insights from one of his followers on X. First, what Joe said, if you want to experience the future, try the latest version of full self-driving. My mind was blown. Anyone else enjoying it? Nearly 300,000 people saw this from Joe. The original from Sawyer, close to 600,000 people. And here's what the message said. I have no words. Holy shit. Jumped fully in, let it drive home to someone else's home. 25 minutes, two freeways. No intervention whatsoever other than choosing the parking spot. Truly a mind-blowing experience. By the way, folks, I've been thinking about this for a while. I don't think I've said this publicly yet. I have so in many private conversations. Have you noticed that literally the last thing the Tesla appears to be even trying to solve for is parking. Now, why would that be? Oh, wait, I know. Because that's literally the least important thing. If you're operating robo taxis autonomously, picking people up and dropping them off, guess what? You don't need the fucking park, do you? It can go off and pick someone else up. So have you noticed? Tesla started first with highways, now city streets, and parking lot navigation. But the last piece of the puzzle is the least important, because it's going to be least commonly used, is actually parking in a spot. I've noticed if you do a point-to-point -point navigation on FSD V12.3, watch where it drops you off. It'll drop you off, generally speaking. If you go, for example, to Home Depot or Costco or somewhere, it'll drop you right outside the front of the entrance, just like a taxi would. Fancy that. We're on the cusp, folks. This is really a big deal. Now, just imagine other customers who've purchased a Tesla, getting shown what it can do, FSD V12.3. In addition, everyone in North America with suitable hardware, which is almost the entire Tesla fleet, can now unlock a one-month free trial of that very software. Minds are going to be blown, pants are going to be blown, everything's going to be blown left, right and centre. And now, folks, the rules. This from Gary Black, whose insights I really appreciate. It's a great window into how the folks on Wall Street think slash don't. As a long-time Tesla bull, I sincerely hope 2024 is the year FSD finally gets to 99.9% .9 intervention free. We all see the incredible progress FSD 12.3 has made over V11, but it won't change fund managers' Tesla valuation if it's just supervised FSD. So let's just take a moment here. The first and most important thing to understand is the rate of progress matters. The second most important thing to understand is Tesla have brains. And despite what the software is currently capable of doing, Tesla are not dumb enough yet to take on unnecessary liability. Therefore, they're using a Trojan horse strategy to get this software on roads to improve it and ultimately awaken the robotaxi fleet by enforcing supervision no matter what. What they could do is systematically unlock FSD unsupervised in certain locations very soon. And eventually they will when the safety profile is there. But doing this too soon just brings more heat, more attention, more pressure from regulators. And for what? Not worth it. So a lot of people get caught up in, is it unsupervised? Is it hands-free? Who fucking cares? Look at the progress of the software and what it's actually doing. Forget what they call it. Forget what level of autonomy this is or isn't. Just watch the software and understand its rate of progress. Tesla are the gatekeepers in terms of what level this software is. Is it supervised? Is it unsupervised? They're deciding here. They're making the strategic decisions. And at some point, when Tesla's comfortable with the safety profile, they're going to flip the switch, so to speak, and tell customers, at least in some areas, I suspect that California first, but very quickly spreading from there. You can now use this software in this location, completely hands-free. Go to sleep if you want. What happens when that occurs? Suddenly, the fund managers who are obeying the rules will now be allowed to include FSD in the valuation models because they're the rules. You can't put it in beforehand. That would require courage. And plus, you'd be breaking the rules. You're not allowed to break the rules. You have to wait till after it happens before you put it in your valuation model. Don't you understand? 
A telling final sentence. Tesla's stock at $175 is the S&P 500's worst performer year to date, despite FSD's amazing progress. Just remember, folks, the rules. And now, Gary adds further clarification again. I'm not hating here. I'm just appreciating Gary, sharing his perspective and how the minds of folks on Wall Street analysts think. Many Tesla bulls ask me why Wall Street doesn't yet get how great FSD V12 is. Wall Street sees the amazing progress between V11 and 12.3, but Wall Street won't add value to the Tesla valuation unless FSD take rates surge two to three times or FSD graduates from being a great driver assist tool to delivering level four slash level five autonomous robotaxi capabilities. So I'll continue, but first let's think about this logically. Will Tesla FSD take rates surge two to three times over time in the future as its capabilities increase? Obviously, yes. The question is, how long does this take? And that's going to be based on how much value customers see, and that's going to be based on how capable the software is. But the software is getting better. It is inevitable over time. The take rates on FSD are going to surge enormously, which is basic value proposition. When the software can literally drive you and you can fall asleep in the back, do whatever you want to get up to in the vehicle, and not need to pay attention. Obviously, the value is so enormous that more people will take that up. Obviously. Right now, it's not a great deal. First thing I'd pay for it, but I can afford to, to free up my cognitive faculties for more important things than paying attention 24-7 and actually driving the vehicle. I'd much rather supervise than be driving. But not everyone has that luxury. And bro, I don't even own a car. But if I did, I'd pay for FST. But most people, it doesn't make sense yet, but it will. So it's obviously going to happen, in my opinion. And if it's obviously going to happen... Why would you wait until it happens if it's obviously going to happen to consider the implications? By the way, folks, if you guys haven't seen my Tesla valuation model, I actually model out FSD take rate over the next decade. It's a critical part of my valuation. And spoiler alert, the take rate increases throughout the decade. The second thing here, analysts would need to see FSD graduate from being a great driver assist tool to delivering level four slash level five autonomous robotaxi capabilities. To get to the latter, Tesla must agree to accept full liability for any injury or damage. Since I don't see that happening anytime soon, Wall Street won't add incremental value beyond the normal take rate math in every analyst Tesla valuation model. So remember when Tesla announced Tesla Insurance? Maybe an insanely good idea. At the time, I hypothesized, actually I just said in hyperbole, listen bitches, this is what's going to happen. Part of the offering eventually, Tesla Insurance isn't just going to be for the vehicle insurance, but also they'll offer an add-on or a combined package that offers liability insurance for FSD once the vehicles are operating autonomously. This is so obvious. I mean, they've built the infrastructure with insurance right now. They've been thinking about this. This is obvious. So it's going to happen, but not yet. That's why Tesla's enforcing supervision on FSD. But once they're ready to, so, so to speak, push the button in certain regions, you no longer need to supervise here. Obviously, liability insurance will come with that. Tesla aren't dumb. That's the short version. Tesla's not dumb. They think about this stuff. Tesla has the data, remember. They can accurately price the risk in terms of liability insurance because they've got data. They know the safety record of the software. This is going to be the all-time greatest product offering in terms of ability to accurately price. No need for actuarial tables. They can look at the actual data of the actual software and its rate of improvement. So what Gary's saying here is until things that are obviously going to happen, happen, the rules determine that people on Wall Street are not allowed to put the things that are obviously going to happen in the valuation model yet because... Until they actually happen, we're not allowed to put them in there. Obvious, though they might be. Now, look, I understand. Remember, the rules. So if you're obeying the rules, then obviously you can't put this stuff in your valuation model yet. Personally, I'm never one to <laughs> obey rules. Not arbitrarily, anyway. Certainly if they make sense. But, bro, this to me is absolute madness. Especially to understand that the progress is incredible, but not to have the courage to value this stuff yet on a probabilistic basis. Seems like something a sausage wallet would do. And now, from the GOAT himself, James Daumer. No kidding, by the way, James could actually charge consulting fees of like six figures, $100,000 plus, have a one-hour conversation over the span of a month, month and a half, with the folks on Wall Street to help them understand FSD, what's going to happen, what is happening, and so on. But hey, James doesn't need the money, apparently, so here's his analysis for free. By the way, if you guys haven't watched all the videos with James talking about FSD, Tesla Autonomy, dude, the guy's an absolute, he's a beast. He gets it, and his insights have been invaluable. So we're looking at some napkin math here, based on real demand data. We're looking at shit cargo rideshare activity in a heat map. There are certain clusters in which there's far more activity versus less, hence the different colors. James continues, we can use Chicago as a baseline to gauge the rideshare demand available to robotaxis and estimate fleet size, revenue and utilization to inform a model of the robotaxi market at the 1 million vehicle US fleet scale. Remember folks, today Tesla has over 2 million vehicles in the United States already 
Now, none of them are currently operating as robo-taxis, but in theory, basically all of them could with an over-the-air software update. We need 10,000 vehicles to service up to 6,500 rides at peak usage, as we can see here. These are the peak times on different days throughout a week. I dare say in most cases, there's a decent correlation with alcohol consumption. So if there's 6,500 robo-taxis operating in Chicago, you have essentially built a fleet sufficient to service all the needs of all the people today using rideshare. Just 6,500 for the entire city. Revenue is $24 million per week for 10.8 million paid miles. The average mile is thus $2.25, but there's a long tail of ride lengths, meaning average trip is $4 per mile. You guys can see different costs in terms of cost per mile on trips clustering around $2.25 a mile, but there is a very long tail. Average trip, 18 minutes. The median, 14 minutes. This is important. Operating costs from a combination of sources gets us to $0.28 cents per mile for a $25,000 retail vehicle or $0.42 cents per fleet mile, including deadheading costs. For those of you wondering what the fuck is deadheading, if you thought about it for a while, you'd probably figure it out. They're miles driven without a passenger, e.g. starting a shift between rides and so on. Not to get too far into the weeds here, but we are in the weeds. We're looking at tyres per mile, power, vehicle cost, vehicle life miles, depreciation, insurance, maintenance, cleaning, operations, the total cost are 42 cents a mile. Looking at this from the individual fleet vehicle standpoint, each vehicle is driving 55 miles a year and generating over $100,000 per year after operating costs. And again, highly encourage everybody who has access to my TES evaluation model to have a peek at my own estimates here. I also include average miles driven per year per robotaxi, which increases over time. At the same time, however, cost per mile plummets. These are important numbers to model out yourself. If you want to use my model as a starting point, feel free. Link in the description, available to supporters on Patreon at the investor level and above. Or, I mean, James is sharing his own estimates here for free. This means a $20,000 vehicle with a 10-year life has a present value of $800,000. Now, I don't want to put too many of the non-number nerds to sleep here, so I'll do my best, but if you're a total autist, just pause the video. What we're looking at here... Yearly profit, $108,900. Present value, $840,896. For a piece of hardware that may cost as little as 20,000 bucks. When you hear Musk talk about asset values increasing essentially overnight, this is what he's talking about. Everyone watching this is watching either on a smartphone or a home computer or maybe a television. Imagine how useful that device would be if it didn't have internet access and so you couldn't watch content on it. In fact, imagine if it didn't even have any power, couldn't even turn it on. Wouldn't have a whole lot of present value, would it? Maybe it's a paperweight or a doorstop, that's about it. But with software, suddenly, its value, its utility increases. And this is really important. But remember, folks, the rules prevent analysts from including any of these potential estimates ahead of time because it's not like it's a big deal anyway. You know, $100,000 a year profit per vehicle in a fleet. It's already about 6 million of them on Earth and going to be 8 million a year from now, maybe more. Yeah, definitely ignore it. Not a big deal anyway. Plus the rules. Just remember the rules. Let's continue. During off-peak, outside of Friday and Saturday evenings, idle vehicles are pre-positioned to allow for reliable 30 to 60 second response times. Density is around 10 plus idle vehicles per square mile. Friday and Saturday evenings are less than two minutes. So we can see the example here of a Chicago fleet utilization. In short, a lot of vehicles sitting around doing fuck all, waiting for a fare. This level of service can be provided in Chicago at current rideshare rates, generating $1.25 billion in revenue and $1 billion in gross profit per year, which is an 80% gross margin. Again, folks, check out my Tesla valuation model for what it's worth. My base case uses a 76% gross margin for robo-taxis. That's the base case. So we're pretty much completely in line. Total coincidence, of course. It's not like I spent a lot of time thinking about this. Ahem. <clears throat> using Tesla's FSD rideshare model. But Chicago is only 1% of US urban population. Now, even the people that are really bad at numbers here, add two zeros to each of these, and suddenly you've got the entire US urban population and the potential here. $125 billion in revenue, $100 billion in gross profit just from the US. $100 billion in profit's not very much, is it? Nah, I didn't think so. Let's ignore it. I prefer to talk about Tesla's gross automotive margins anyway, wouldn't you? <clears throat> So make sure you're sitting down for the final post in this thread. Extrapolating to the whole US, you get a 1 million vehicle fleet. Again, Tesla's fleet in the US today already in excess of 2 million. They have more than enough vehicles on roads today to service the entire US operating as robotaxis. 
generating $100 billion in gross profit per year. Naturally, there will be competition, regulatory barriers, fights with incumbents, and pushback from various quarters, so actual results will vary, perhaps substantially. But the potential for the underlying business is extraordinary. Looking even further ahead, a cost floor of $0.40 cents per mile allows for expansion beyond current rideshare demand. In other words, if it's way cheaper to use a robo-taxi, an autonomous robo-taxi, than it is to use, say, an Uber today, which this is what we're talking about, from over $2 per mile to like $0.40 cents a mile, it's very likely that more people will use rideshare. This is just basic economics. If more people can afford it, more people are likely to use it. Like think about all the dumb fucks who are too tight to pay for an Uber home, who go out drinking and drive themselves to a bar knowing they're going to drive home drunk because they're an idiot and they don't want to spend the money. I don't want to spend $35 on Uber, fuck that, I'll just drive home and kill someone instead. A lot of those dipshits are probably going to go, you know what? Yeah, I'll spend the couple of dollars getting myself home safely as opposed to potentially mowing down people on the way home. That's just one such example. Think about all the people today who take public transport who'd rather not, but for economic reasons they don't have much choice, who will now be able to afford rideshare at those kind of rates. So obviously the number of miles driven is actually going to expand. So these estimates were based on current miles driven. So as James points out, this allows for expansion beyond current rideshare demand, potentially commoditizing half or more of all vehicle miles in the US. 50% of US vehicle miles with 60 cents revenue and 40 cents cost per mile is $250 billion of profit on a $750 billion stream of revenue. That's a very big industry and that's only the US. So I think what James is trying to say is autonomy is not a big deal, but even if it was a big deal, there are rules that we must obey and therefore we should not consider the potential implications in terms of evaluation and the financials and the profits because there are rules and we must obey them like a good sausage wallet. And to wrap up here, folks, the single biggest driver of my Tesla valuation by, I'm trying not to make puns here, the driver by miles, no pun intended, the single biggest driver by miles, literally, is autonomy. My thesis is pretty simple. Fuck when autonomies are solved and the first robot taxis begin operation, okay? I don't really care what the date is. I've got my best guesses out there. Again, they're in the valuation model, link in the description. My thesis, I believe the Tesla has an unassailable data lead. They're so far ahead, it's a joke. And safety matters here. They're going to be the first to widely deploy safe robot taxis in the US and other parts of the world. And they'll continue to maintain a safety advantage. For any company to catch up, would require an investment of many tens of billions of dollars, likely more, because not only do they need to get to where Tesla is today, which that alone will cost tens of billions of dollars, vehicles, roads, sensors, building out the team, but they have to catch up to Tesla and then exceed them. Good luck with that. Therefore, I think many companies were like, you know what, fuck it. We need to offer autonomy. We can't solve it ourselves. We'll just license the stuff from Tesla, which by the way, also is in my valuation model. So this is why the timing isn't such a big deal to me. I don't care if it happens in 2024, 25, 26, I don't care. If Tesla's first, and it's obvious they will be, what an arrogant thing to say, but it's true, check back in when it happens. If they're first, and they have an unassailable data lead, and other companies will end up licensing this stuff, it's a done fucking deal, and people really should be thinking about the implications if they own Tesla stock or are thinking about owning Tesla stock. I'm just kidding, because there's rules, and we, we should ignore it, because that's what the rules say. And I say, fuck your rules. I strongly encourage everyone watching to go through this exercise. Don't just copy numbers from someone else. It might be a good starting point. But think through this. Try to understand and size up the opportunity and value it accordingly. This is a winner takes most market. It seems clear to me that Tesla will be the winner. Hence, I continue to buy with every spare cent and relentlessly roast people who today are selling Tesla stock, dumping it, trimming it because of the rules. Want more content? Early access? Bunch of perks? Click the links in the pinned comment. AG1 has given me a massive meaningful boost in energy, allowing me to do a lot more every day, including using my brain more and using my body more. I highly recommend you guys and girls check it out. It's an excellent way to fill in nutritional gaps. It's got 75 high quality vitamins, minerals, and whole food source nutrients, plus prebiotics and probiotics and digestive enzymes and adaptogens to help you deal with stress. Plus, if you click the link in the pinned comment or head to drinkag1.com SMR, you can get yourself a one year free supply of vitamin D3 and K2. But don't take my word for it. Here's what some of you guys and girls have to say. AG1 has changed my life. I was, as you described, treating myself like a circus. I ate like trash, rarely exercised, used alcohol as a stress crutch, cannabis also. AG1 is what gave me the kick in the ass, got me back to the gym, motivated me to do more for myself, family, my business, etc. Keep doing what you do. Now, I know there's some skeptics, the same kind of people who think Elon Musk is a fraud reading this going, what do you thought? There's no way that's possible, bro. It must be a placebo effect. Believe it or not, this is a recurring theme. 
If you give your body everything it needs to feel and perform its best, including having a lot more energy, you'll need ways to use that energy. For me personally, that includes more exercise, moving my body more, more social activity, and more cognitively demanding tasks, including producing a ton of exclusive content over on Twitter and on Patreon, plus my daily YouTube uploads. The proof's in the pudding. On to another testimonial from a viewer of this channel. SMR, you asked me to provide feedback on AG1. Here it is. It has helped with mental acuity, stamina, and intestinal waste management. <laughs> uh, can't read between the lines. It certainly helps with regularity and digestion. That's what the digestive enzymes are for. It has also dramatically reduced my cravings for sugar. You guys need to stop eating sugar. It's fucking poison. I'm 50, 5'9", and overweight, aka a fat motherfucker. I think that's a technical term for overweight, isn't it? Is it fat motherfucker or obese? I can't remember. I average 100 hours a week in the West Texas oil fields as a safety supervisor. Jesus Christ, dude. No wonder you're struggling to keep your weight under control. 100 hours a week. Brutal. It has helped me lose weight. It is not an appetite suppressant. It can help fat people suppress cravings and motivation to be healthier is critical for changing your diet. Love you, brother. Again, this is a great point. It's something people really don't seem to grasp. If you have more energy, everything becomes easier. It's like turning on easy mode for life. A few years ago, before I was taking AG1, my health was trash. I was struggling to get through the day, had afternoon fatigue. The last thing I wanted to do was either use my brain or move my body. Didn't have the energy. Now, my biggest struggle every day is figuring out ways to use that energy. I'm exercising way more, doing a lot more with my friends and family. And of course, my work output has increased substantially. And you can fact check me. Check out the average length of my videos I was posting to YouTube three years ago. Need I say more? And one final testimonial. Love this one. Okay, here's the deal for me with this AG1 shit. I'm 41 years old and not the type to eat, drink, smoke or sleep healthy, so I was skeptical. That being said, here's what I experienced. Day one, meh. Day two, afternoon fatigue was about 45 minutes late. Day three, zero afternoon fatigue. Day four, zero afternoon fatigue plus extra energy. Day five, again, zero afternoon fatigue plus energy, wondering, what the fuck, really? See, this is the thing, right? The results for many people are just almost too good to be true. This, this is the same experience I had. My afternoon fatigue just vanished out of nowhere. I'm like, wait, what the fuck? Why am I not tired in the afternoons anymore? Surely, it's not that AG1, is it? Turns out it was. Day six and seven, same thing. Day eight, same thing. Plus, I had the want to get things done around the house that I normally would slack off and not get done. Again, the point, extra energy, you'll need to use it, you'll find ways to use it. Day 9, 10, and 11, and today is day 12. I fucking love it. So however you managed to get me to buy it, I'm so glad you did. Thank you so much, SMR. It really changed me so far. Guys, this shit really works. Just try it. By the way, this is the reason I continue to relentlessly promote AG1. A lot of people get real fucking mad in the comments. Oh my god, Snake Oil Salmon sold out. Oh my god, he's a scammer. This is fraud, but... Constantly, I'm pretty sure everyone making these comments is also currently short Tesla stock. I'm not particularly concerned about people having a negative perception, those folks suffering from small brain syndrome, still living in my bum's basement syndrome, etc., writing mean comments, claiming AG1's a scam or it doesn't work. I mean, bro, when I get feedback like this, this is what keeps me going. Just try this stuff for a month, and if you don't get these results, get your money back. See, it's a literal no-brainer. It's an IQ test at this point in time. Testimonial after testimonial after testimonial like this. Get your money back if it doesn't work. Just try it for a month and if it doesn't work, get your money back. Today's the day. It's finally time. Be like this guy who was a massive skeptic, but finally, after a thousand promotions in a row, caved in, tried AG1 and has results like this. Head to drinkag1.com slash SMR or click the link at the pinned comment and please let me know how you're feeling in a few weeks time. Now, if you'll excuse me, time to put my extra energy to good use. I'll be recording some more exclusive content for Patreon and my Twitter subscribers. So click the links in the pinned comment. See you over on Twitter and or Patreon. And don't forget to grab your AG1. Love ya.